sponsored by CuriosityStream. So, you're planning to buy a new MacBook for work, for school, to be more productive, to be more creative, to better do what you currently do, or to start something completely new. But you're just not entirely quite sure yet which one to get. Well, I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is the video for you. Last year, the MacBook lineup was far more complicated, the differences far more nuanced, and the choices far more difficult. Now, Apple has updated, cleaned up, and improved almost everything, and the result is the cleanest MacBook lineup in half a decade, maybe more. So, if you just want a MacBook you can take pretty much anywhere and do pretty much anything with, and portability and price are your priorities, then you've got the new baseline, the new MacBook Air. If you want a good mix of portability and power, and you're willing to pay a little more for it, then you have the entry-level and higher-end 13-inch MacBook Pro. If you need power more than portability, and you're willing to pay more, maybe even a lot more depending on how much more power you need, then you've got the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, simple as that is, there are some important things and a bunch of options you should know about each of these systems before you decide to make any of them your own. So, let's break them all down. If you need a new MacBook and that's all you really know or care about, if you're a student or teacher, a jet setter or coffee shopper, if you mostly use the web and documents, photos and messaging, get the MacBook Air. It's not only the least expensive MacBook in Apple's lineup, it's also the simplest. You pick your color, you pick your storage, you pick your memory, and that's it. It's almost iPad simple for people who just want a Mac without all the fuss. And that's what the MacBook Air is for. Everyone who wants a traditional computer without the traditional computer hassles. Here's what you get in your choice of silver, space gray, or gold. It has an Intel 2018 8th generation Amber Lake processor, which is a more mobile-friendly Y-series version of Coffee Lake. It just doesn't run quite as fast or as hot. And Intel UHD Graphics 617, which is, you know, Intel Embedded Graphics. Unlike most computers, even most Macs, there are no other options. Every MacBook Air comes with exactly the same 1.6 GHz dual-core i5 processor, turbo boost up to 3.6 GHz, and that's it, again like iPad simple. It's got a 13.3 inch retina display, which means a person with average vision from an average working distance can't see pixels, just sharp text and graphics, though at 400 nits and sRGB, it's not quite as bright or as colorful as the MacBook Pro displays. Earlier this year, Apple updated it with True Tone as well, which means it now has sensors to read the color temperature in the room and adjust the white point so it always looks white, not yellow, not blue, just plain paper white. It's got a 720p webcam and three mics to support voice-activated Siri and the new macOS Catalina voice control. It has two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, one for power when you need it, and the other or both for just about everything else, though you'll likely need a USB-A adapter or two as well, at least for the still foreseeable future. And it's got Apple's T2 security chip, which makes it harder for anyone to steal or infect your stuff, and also gives you Touch ID, which makes it easier for you to unlock or authorize Apple Pay. The base model starts at $10.99, but you might be able to find it for less over the holidays, especially if you keep it locked to thrifter.com. For that, you get 8 gigabytes of low-power DDR3 RAM and 128 gigabytes of SSD storage, which, yeah, is on the low side. I mean, it might be fine if you do most of your work online, stream most of your music and videos, and especially if you use Safari instead of a ton of Chrome tabs and Electron apps. If you want or need more breathing room, you can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM for an extra $200 and 256 or 512 gigabytes or one terabyte of storage for an extra 200 400 and 600 bucks respectively. So you're looking at 1099 base to 1899 maxed out with a bunch of options in between, but fewer and simpler ones than usual. Now, there may be a Comet Lake Magic Keyboard version of the MacBook Air at some point next year, but for now, the newly updated MacBook Air really is the new normal for everyone who, like I said, just wants a MacBook to take with them everywhere and do pretty much everything they need to do. If you need a new MacBook, but you need to do quote unquote real work, bracket, TM, close bracket, if you're a pro photographer, videographer, audio producer or engineer, designer or coder, or aspiring to be, then you want the MacBook Pro. And if you still want some portability with that power, you want the smaller 13 inch MacBook Pro. Here's what you give up. The MacBook Pro is squared more than wedge shaped like the Air and a quarter pound heavier. It's also got 10 instead of 12 hours of web browsing battery life and you can't get it in gold. Here's what you get. 
The 13.3 inch screen is the same size and density as the Air, but 100 nits brighter and with a wider P3 gamut, it's more colorful. Also, with all modern Macs and Mac OS Catalina with Sidecar, you can now hook up a modern iPad as a second display to give yourself more screen real estate, even on the go, if you need it. Processor options are, well, buckle yourselves in. The new baseline model starts with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core eighth generation Intel Core i5 Coffee Lake processor with turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz and Intel Iris Plus graphics 645. That's at 1299. For an extra $300, you can go to a 1.7 gigahertz with turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz. With those models though, you only get two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. If you want faster processors and more ports, you'll have to move up to the higher end version. Those start at $17.99, but give you a 2.4 gigahertz with turbo boost up to 4.1 gigahertz. Or for an extra $300, a 2.8 gigahertz with a turbo boost up to 4.7 gigahertz. You can go from eight gigabytes of low power DDR3 RAM to 16 gigabytes for an extra 200 bucks, but that's the hard limit on both the low power and the 13 inch right now, alas. For the two port entry level model, you can go from 128 gigabytes of SSD to 256 or 512 gigabytes or one or two terabytes for an extra 200, 400, 600 or a thousand bucks respectively, which is yeah, still crazy expensive even with the price drops at the higher tiers. For the four port model, you can go from 256 gigabytes of SSD to 512 or one or two terabytes for 200, 400 or 800 bucks also respectively. That also takes you from the baseline 1299 all the way up to 3099. There will likely also be an updated 10th generation whatever like magic keyboard version announced sometime next year. But for now, if you want the best blend of portability and power so you can get as much work done as possible while carrying around as little as possible, be it photos, video, code in the air or on the road, you want the 13 inch MacBook Pro. If you need a new MacBook and time is money and power is worth any premium and you want the most power possible, then you want the all new full on 16 inch MacBook Pro. Here's what you give up. The 16 inch MacBook Pro isn't just taller and wider to fit in those extra couple inches of screen. It's thicker and now over a pound heavier hitting 4.3 pounds. For that extra weight though, you get the biggest battery currently allowed by law, which gives you up to 11 hours of web surfing battery life. The 16 inch screen is the same as the 13 inch, same brightness, same gamut, just bigger and with more pixels, 3072 by 1920 instead of 2560 by 1600. Processor options are extreme. You start off with a 2.6 gigahertz, six core, ninth generation, Intel Core i7, Coffee Lake refresh with turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz and Radeon Pro 5300M with four gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. That's for $23.99. For an extra $300, you can go up to a 2.4 gigahertz, eight core, core i9, Coffee Lake refresh processor with turbo boost up to five gigahertz. For another $100, you can pump up the graphics to Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And for an extra $200, you can go up to eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Depending on how you choose your own adventure through the build to order options, you can also find a 2.3 gigahertz, eight core, ninth generation Intel Core i9 Coffee Lake refresh processor with turbo boost up to 4.8 gigahertz for $27.99 and which could be better if your workload peaks less and sustains more. The 16 inch starts at 16 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz DDR4 memory. You can go to 32 gigabytes for an extra 400 bucks and as of right now, a whopping 64 gigabytes for an extra $800. Storage starts at 512 gigabytes now, but you can get one, two, four, or a brain bending eight terabytes for 200, 600, 1200, or 2400 bucks respectively. Ouch, but amazing. You also get a six speaker array, which unbelievably sounds almost as good as a home pod and a three mic array, which you can use in place of a USB microphone in a pinch. So yeah, that all still starts at $23.99, but tops out at $6,099 now, which is legit less than I thought it would be and is around the starting price of the new Mac Pro. Still, that's a lot of options and a lot of money, but if you're a hardcore keyboard clacking, pixel pushing, red rendering, code crunching, design daring doer, your time is worth more than your money and you'll pay or just bill out your clients just about anything for performance, then you want the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And you'll want CuriosityStream and Nebula to go with it. 
Yeah, Nebula. It's the video platform built by and for independent creators like Thomas Frank, Captain Midnight, Medlife Crisis, Patrick Eight Willems, Low Spec Gamer, and yours truly. We're building it because we want a place for education-y creators to try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube or for people who simply don't want to watch on YouTube, including cool new original series like Working Titles and Grand Test Auto. And because it now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series like Bright Now and the Coffee Buzz episode, where experts reveal some of the surprising secrets that make your favorite coffees taste the way they do. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create content you really want us to create. Go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now Nebula as well. Enter promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Okay, so I know that's all still more complicated than you or me or anyone might like. So again, here's the cheat sheet. If you just want a MacBook you can take pretty much anywhere and do pretty much anything with, and portability and price are your priorities, then you've got the new baseline, the new MacBook Air. If you want a good mix of portability and power, and you're willing to pay a little more for it, then you have the entry level and higher end 13 inch MacBook Pro. And if you need power more than portability, and you're willing to pay more, maybe even a lot more depending on how much more power you need, then you've got the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. And if even that is still too complicated, just get the MacBook Air. At least that's what I think. Now, I'd love to know what you think. Hit like if you do, share if you care, subscribe if you haven't already, magic key click that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next show, and then hit up the comments and let me know what's the perfect MacBook for you. Thanks for watching, see you next video.